Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Brain Cyclopedia. In today's episode, we will learn about the reinforcement learning schedules. Without further ado, let's get on to today's video. This video is the second part of a two-part mini-series videos on operant conditioning and reinforcement learning. Before proceeding today with the video, we recommend you watch the part one of this mini-series that covers all the basics of the concepts in the operant conditioning theory, which will be helpful in understanding the content of today's video. You can find the link of the operant conditioning video in the description box below or by clicking the i button on the top right corner of the screen. If you are already familiar with the key concepts of the operant conditioning theory, then you can proceed with today's video. In today's video, we will first begin by understanding what is reinforcement schedule or the concept of reinforcement schedules. And then we go on to understanding the key fundamental types of reinforcement schedules, which is the continuous reinforcement schedule and the partial reinforcement schedule. Under the partial reinforcement schedule, we will learn about the four key types, which is the fixed ratio and fixed interval schedules and variable ratio and variable interval schedules. Without further ado, let's proceed. Reinforcement schedules are well-defined rules which determine when and after how many responses will the animal receive a reward or not. In other words, reinforcement schedules are the ways in which we decide or define the time gap or the ratio of responses between the occurrence of a desired action and the related rewards or punishments that are given for those actions. For instance, the occurrence of the action of studying for an exam and the occurrence of the reward, which in this case can be scoring first place in the class, occurs at a defined time gap. This time gap can be referred to as the reinforcement schedule in this case. There are two fundamental types of reinforcement schedules the first one being continuous reinforcement schedule and the second one partial or intermittent reinforcement schedule. A continuous reinforcement schedule essentially refers to reinforcing a desired behavior at a continuous predictable time interval every time the desired behavior occurs. For example, when training your dog to learn a trick, every time your dog performs the trick that is appropriately displays the desired behavior, you might reinforce your dog with a treat of his liking. When this occurs a number of times in that order, that is when the desirable action is produced and followed with a treat, the dog will learn the behavior. The schematic here displays really well the conceptual essence of the reinforcement learning schedule. There are a few characteristics of this particular reinforcement schedule. First of all, it is one of the most effective schedules when you are in the initial stages of learning a behavior because it allows you to implement a strong association between a certain behavior and its consequences. Continuous reinforcement schedules can involve the usage of both positive and negative reinforcers when they are encouraging a behavior or trying to reduce the intensity of a particular behavior. In our everyday lives, however, we see that this form of reinforcement might not appear as often as we might think. Now imagine receiving a reward every single day when you show up at work. That seldom happens, right? Most importantly, research has shown that continuous reinforcement results in subjects responding much slower to rewards as the reinforcement schedule progresses further. In fact, this form of uh, reinforcement schedule also has a very high rate of extinction of behavior. When you stop reinforcing a particular behavior, it results in the response disappearing at a very fast rate. And this schedule is therefore responsible for faster behavioral extinction. This schedule is also highly predictable as one can predict the delivery of the reward because of its continuous periodic nature of delivery. It is also observed that the reward in this schedule eventually tends to lose its appeal and rather than being a satisfactory reward, the loss of the reward can become a larger negative form of reinforcement. 
Finally, this form of reinforcement, as mentioned before, appears much less often in everyday life as it requires a lot of effort to maintain it systematically in the longer run, which can be very unrealistic. Partial reinforcement schedules, also referred to as the intermittent reinforcement schedules, are the type of schedules wherein an animal does not get reinforced every time they perform the desired behavior. In other words, the time gap or the ratio of actions between the action taking place and the delivery of the reward or punishment is not predictable, like in the continuous schedule as depicted in this particular schematic. There are four types of partial reinforcement schedules, namely fixed interval, fixed ratio, variable interval, and variable ratio. Let's understand each of these types in a little more detail. The fixed ratio reinforcement schedule refers to a type of reinforcement schedule in which one receives a reward only if a behavior has occurred for a specific number of times. Let's unpack this with an example. For instance, a perfume seller is instructed that she will earn a bonus commission only when she will sell 10 perfumes a day. Thus, to earn her bonus, she will aim to sell at least 10 perfumes a day. The quality or the grade of the perfume or even the brand of the perfume sold is not very important in this case of the fixed ratio schedules as the goal is to reach a specific quantity of selling 10 perfumes a day in order to get her reward bonus. Thus, fixed ratio style schedules are most effective when the behavior modification is aimed at quantitative changes in order to optimize the quantity of output instead of the quality of output. Graphically, we can plot the fixed ratio schedule as depicted here in the schematic. This hill-like dynamics represents the pause and burst pattern, which resonates with the rhythm between the action undertaken and the delivery of the reward. Subjects tend to respond at a high rate until the reinforcement is delivered, at which point they will pause for a brief moment. However, responding will resume once again at a much faster and a higher rate in accordance with the pause and burst pattern. This high rate of response is one of the key advantages of this particular schedule. One possible disadvantage is that subjects may quickly become very exhausted from such a high response rate or they may become very satiated after several reinforcements that have been given. The fixed ratio schedules are often used after a response that has been learned, but you want to reinforce it again. The fixed interval reinforcement schedule refers to the schedule in which one receives a reward only following a set amount of time. In other words, one's response is rewarded only after a specified amount of time has elapsed. For example, we know that after working for 30 days, you will receive your salary. In other words, after the specified amount of time of 30 days has elapsed, the employee can expect to receive their salary. Graphically, we can plot the fixed interval reinforcement schedule as depicted here. Here we can see that the schedule has a fixed pattern of repeated reward delivery after a predetermined amount of time has passed. It has been observed that this schedule causes high amounts of responding near the end of the interval, but much slower responding immediately after the delivery of the reinforcer. This type of pause following the delivery of the reinforcement in the schedule and subsequent acceleration of responding results in the scalloped pattern, and this is referred to as the post-reinforcement pause.
The key advantage of this schedule is that it's fairly easy to implement in order for getting behavior modification in place. Variable ratio reinforcement schedule refers to the schedule where the ratio at which the reward is provided varies. In other words, the response is reinforced after an unpredictable number of responses, unlike the fixed ratio wherein the act is responded after a specific ratio of responses. This graphical representation depicts how the rewards are provided under the schedule. This is the most powerful type of partial reinforcement schedule, and a key advantage of this type of schedule is that it creates a steady and high rate response of the behavior that you desire to elicit. A common example of the variable ratio is the act of gambling. For example, if Bella visits the casino and she tries her luck in the slot machines, she will try playing in the first slot trial and she might lose. She might want to recoup that and go on to playing in the next gamble and try again. Bad luck, she lost again. She'll try again to recoup the loss and she's lost again. She'll try again to recoup the loss and perhaps lost again. And she'll try another time and this time she hit the jackpot. You can see here that she's already had four failed attempts and then she has won the jackpot after a long time. She will try again and she might lose and so on. This shows that in gambling, the variable ratio of reinforcement schedule is the dominant reinforcement schedule, wherein we don't know after how many attempts of gambling in a particular machine, the jackpot or any form of reward will be available. Now, it is this form of reinforcement schedules that lead to addictive behaviors. As you can see in this example, Bella tried so many times in order to recoup her losses. Sure, she won the jackpot at some point, but there were a lot of attempts which were failed. This is what underlies the development of gambling disorder-like behaviors and lead to the exacerbation of phenomena like loss chasing, which is what we saw in the schematic. There are four key characteristics of variable ratio schedule. First of all, the rewards in the schedule are very unpredictable, as we just saw in this example of gambling. However, because of this unpredictable nature, the reinforcement is always in an anticipatory state. In other words, the animal is always anticipating the presence of the reward in the next trial. So this results in a high and steady response rate. Now, we observe both reinforcement pauses in this type of schedule, but they're much brief because once the animal receives a reward, they quickly go back in a very fast pace responding all over again. And finally, because of this anticipatory headspace that the animal is in, in this particular reward schedule, it's very difficult for us to extinct their behavior because they're constantly trying to achieve the reward in the next attempt. The variable interval reinforcement schedule is the type of schedule wherein an animal gets reinforced across varying amounts of unpredictable time span, unlike the fixed interval schedule wherein one gets rewarded after a specified amount of time has elapsed. A common example of this schedule is checking your social media. Typically, you may check your social media at random times throughout the day instead of checking every time a single message or notification is delivered. The thing about social media is that in most cases, you may never know when you're going to receive a message or notification. Because of this, notifications tend to roll in sporadically at completely unpredictable times. When you check and see 
that you have received a message or notification, it acts as a reinforcer for checking your social media account. Another common example is getting surprise tests in schools. For example, your psychology instructor might use this particular uh, form of uh, schedule in the surprise tests that she gives you. Suppose she gives the class periodic pop quizzes to test the knowledge of the students and to make sure that everyone is paying attention in the class. While these exams can occur with some frequency, you never really know what exactly you might go through in when you give the pop quiz a chance. One week you might end up taking two pop quizzes and then go a full two weeks without any. Because you never know when you might receive a pop quiz, you will probably pay more attention in the class in order to fare well whenever the exams happen. A variable interval schedule can be graphically represented as follows, as presented in the schematic. There are three key characteristics of this particular schedule. Similar to the variable ratio schedule, this particular schedule is also very resistant to extinction, again because of the anticipatory nature which is inherent in this particular schedule, similar to the variable ratio schedule. We observe that the rate of response in this particular schedule is not as high as the variable ratio schedule, but is as steady as the variable ratio schedule. On the other hand, in this schedule as well, the reinforcement leads to very minimal pause after the reinforcement has been delivered to the animal. Alright, that is the end of today's video. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, then subscribe today. Leave a like, share this video with someone you think will benefit from today's content, and comment below and leave your feedback or future video requests and press the bell icon to remain updated about new video uploads. Follow us on all of our social media sites. The link of this will be given in the description box below. If you would like uh, to donate, please consider making a donation to our channel on buymecoffee.com if you like the content that Braincyclopedia brings to you. See you in our next video.